We just had the perfect day at Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. You would know we're in a parking lot. The flashback. <laughs> well, we didn't make it again. <laughs> Here's the thing about Sage and I. <laughs> Rope drop is a concept and time isn't real. <laughs> and Sage and I just realized that. <laughs> so perfect day, 917. What are you most excited about today? I'm most excited to see World Celebration. <laughs> Have you not seen it yet? I haven't seen it Oh, yet. that'll be fun. I think we should do that early. Okay. Well. I also want to ride Living with the Lamb with the Christmas lights. And then, where are we going? <laughs> Hollywood Studios? Oh, I'm excited to see Fantasmic. It's going to be a good day. Because when life hands you lemons, you dance like a fool. This really is going to be the perfect day. <laughs> now, typically, we actually say don't go come to Connections Cafe, which is the Starbucks location here at Epcot. Each uh, park will have a Starbucks location. Main Street Bakery over at uh, Magic Kingdom, Red Charlie Car Cafe over at uh, Hollywood Studios, and Creature Comforts over at Animal Kingdom. But I looked at Quincy and I said, wait a minute, we're in, we're, we're, about, to, we're about to scan in. What about Joffrey's? And she said, it's Christmas. We go to Starbucks at the holidays. Because this. She's an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> it can get pretty busy, especially during uh, early morning hours, the, the rope dropping time, the valuable rope dropping time. But for the purposes of the day and the needs and wants of Quincy, we are we are here at Creature Comforts. Hi. It's my perfect day too. Okay? <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. And now to World Celebration. Yes, this is my number one priority today. World Celebration, which is the center land in Epcot, has been under construction for 500 years. 525,600 minutes. But more um, than that, because that's only a year. Yeah, so it's been under construction for a really long time. And they finally, finally, construction walls came down and the whole new area is open. There aren't actually really any new offerings in World Celebration as of yet. It's just a really beautiful and nice area that I'm excited to walk around and sit and drink our coffees in. But there is uh, Dreamer's Point. There is Dreamer's Point. Which is, uh, there is a line for it. It is more of a, um, uh, a photo op. But uh, Walt Disney uh, is in his seated position, not in the center, but kind of a little bit seated to the left because, uh, look, you know, I love listening to an, uh, an interview with Imagineer, and the reason he is seated the way that he is is because he's looking towards the future, he's looking outwards, and why would he be seated in the middle? No, nobody just sits in the middle of a bench. That's weird. He's actually just seated right to the left because it's more realistic, and that way it gives the opportunity uh, for Walt to invite other people to sit along with him and to en enjoy the uh, beauty of. Epcot with him. So what you'll find in here is a lot of photo pass opportunities. You've got the one with Walt at Dreamers Point as well as some meet and greets. Daisy's meeting over there right now. And just this really beautiful one with Spaceship Earth framed. I think this is amazing. I think it looks gorgeous. I love all the foliage. One thing about sort of the direction the parks went in the early uh, 2000s and 2010s is that they went away from having trees. I'm very pro tree. So this is awesome. And if you remember, if you were around Epcot in the 1980s, this ground will look really familiar to you. And I've heard a lot of people say that it's really, really special that Disney has brought this back because it feels like old Epcot. It feels nostalgic. So uh, I think that's really cool. Do you want to go? Do you want to go sit, or do you want to go, go take sit. a? Do you want to take a picture with? I want to sit, and then I want to take a picture with Walt. Okay, let's do that. They're still flushing out the rest of World Celebration. Uh, this, you know, the big opening part is still uh, the big open. Oh, I guess. The big middle part, kind of this section that we're in right now, is open, but they're still working on Communicore Plaza, Communicore Hall, which is going to be kind of a central hub for festivals. It's going to have some meet and greet as well as some uh, outdoor live entertainment as well, which I'm super pumped for. Uh, where do you want to sit? I want to sit on this bench in the sun. <laughs> sun bench. Oh the, oh, the one right next to the construction wall? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to I go anywhere like near these, like under these gorgeous lanterns or... Or maybe, oh, like there's, maybe by it doesn't see this charging ports here as well. No, this is good. <laughs> Come over here for a second. What's also really great about World Celebration is that they have these charging ports available to you. That way, if you are, for some reason, I don't know, here doing work, or you need to charge your, your phone. Because my Disney experience has drained your entire battery. Yes. We got these. These little things to let you know that oh, oh that's wet. 
That's about as much water as on the, on the floor of your car right now. <laughs> because Quincy <laughs> spilled her water bottle in my car earlier. Okay. Yeah, see there are outlets here, here. I mean, they are, they, this, they've definitely kind of turned this into a, a relaxing and recharging area, not just for your body, but for your cellular for your devices. Cellular devices. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, you... Drink lemonade? No. <laughs> No, first you roll out a multimedia campaign oh, to convince people I that lemons are incredibly this. scarce, which only works if you stockpile lemons, control the supply, then a media blitz. Lemon is the only way to say I love you. The must-have accessory for engagements, anniversaries, roses are out, lemons are in. Billboards say that she will not love you unless you've got lemons. You cut the beers in on it. Limited edition lemon bracelets, yellow diamonds called lemon drops. You get Apple to call the new operating system OS Lemon. Little accent over the O. You charge 40% more for organic lemons, 50% more for conflict-free lemons. You pack the capital with lemon lobbyists and you get Timothy Chalamet to wear lemon shoes at King's. Get a hashtag campaign. Something isn't cool or tight or awesome. No, it's lemon. Did you see that movie? Did you see that concert? It was so lemon. Billie Eilish, OMG, hashtag lemon. Then you write a line of genetic code that makes your lemons just a bit more round. And when you've sold your lempire for a few billion dollars, then and only then do you make some lemonade. Our individual lightning lane finally dropped for Guardians of the Galaxy. When I say finally, I mean like 30 minutes ago uh, because we decided to finish our coffee and we just were so obsessed with World Celebration. We spent yeah. way too much time in there. Maybe we did. <laughs> but sometimes you want to sit down. Exactly. Uh, but we're here for uh, Cosmic Rewind. Now, the individual lightning lane that I purchased this morning, each one was $15 per person. Yep. We uh, do have uh, Genie and individual lightning lanes today. Uh, we're, we're using them kind of just sparingly uh, to help aid our perfect day. If you want to learn more about how the Genie process works, you can check out our Genie 101 video that's up on the channel now. For right now, we're about to head into Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which is a high thrill coaster attraction based on Guardians of the Galaxy. I always like to think of it as a mashup between Space Mountain rock and roller coaster using the ride vehicle of Escape from Green Gods. Now, one of our favorite things about this attraction is that there is a rotating uh, uh, soundtrack that plays uh, typically between six different songs. I'm deep in a disco inferno curse right now. See, uh, I'm on again? my third. I've done three in a row, so. I will say last time I also disco inferno, but the time before that I had September, so. But maybe the power combined will get something totally random. I would love that, but I think we're gonna get disco inferno. As you're about to enter a secure Nova area. I must ask you to put away your Terran communication devices at this time. You ready for Disco Inferno? No, no. We, no, the powers, our powers combined. Maria, look at it's December. Mm -hmm. Yeah, December. No, I don't think. You're likely doomed. Rex, good, good luck. luck. You're gonna need it. I think we're jumping back. Oh. Luckily, I have, a, I have a mirror here so that way you can check how good you look afterwards. It was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but we got uh, we got one way or another. We did not get Disco Inferno. We did. Although I will say I've only gotten Disco Inferno or one way or another Tough. lately. But you know what? It's not Disco, I'll take it. Uh, glass half full. You know what they say, because when life hands you lemons, you... Make lemonade. Don't no. do it. Don't do it. Don't do First, it. you're allowed a multimedia oh campaign. God. We are headed to the land. We can't physically visit Epcot without riding Living with the Land, especially uh, the time of filming December. Uh, and it's got a cute little uh, ride overlay. Now, typically I would say, you know, you got to ride Living with the Land when it gets darker out. But we won't be here when it's dark. Uh, specifically no, we're because- We're hopping. Because we're hopping. We're hopping. We're pulling over because something unprecedented has occurred. This is the longest I've seen Living with the Land. Living with the Land, Glimmering Greenhouses is a 30 minute wait right now. That is just too darn long for Living with the Land, though it is an amazing attraction. 30 minutes is a really long time. So we're checking for a lightning lane, right? Is that what you're doing? Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. I just said that. Now I already, now I already booked a lightning lane in Hollywood Studios because I wanted to start stacking. Um, and I booked for Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway, uh, but it, 
it is worth it to just modify just for this real quick if the lighting lane is I would, super... I'd love to do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I might have to... Might have to cancel and book. Cancel all two. Okay, so if it's in two different parks, you have to cancel your lightning lane to book the one in the park that you're in. There it is. There it is. Book. Look. You can get in your lightning lane five minutes early. So uh, in one minute, we'll be able to scan our lightning lane into uh, Living with the Land and not wait in a 30-minute wait. And what's great is that because uh, you only have to scan in once Living with the Land, as soon as I scan in, I can immediately book my next lightning lane. Get and Mickey and Minnie's back. Correct. Yep. And with using our lightning lane, uh, what would have been a 30-minute wait was uh, we got in line at 11.35, so it's 11.38 now. It's only been three minutes, so worth it. Front row, baby. Oh, that's good. We are headed to World Showcase. Um, I've heard of it. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, we're headed to World Showcase because uh, we're starting to finally get in some of our lightning lanes uh, and Frozen, the one that I tried to get at, that I got at 7 a.m. this morning because the park is so busy. Uh, it's, a, it's a rather busy day. I, we even checked uh, over at Hollywood Studios so we could start uh, stacking some of those lightning lanes. And at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, uh, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway was 100 minutes, which is just... It's definitely a, a higher day. Typically, you'll find some of those uh, attractions probably around 60, 70 minutes. That's on normal park days. 100 minutes, that's a lot. Quincy walked by a plant and living with the land, and now she can't stop sneezing. Yeah. This what is, was it? You were looking at the Mickey Gardens because you can actually take home a, a plant and a pod. I was holding the lavender one or the banana one. I don't think I'm allergic oh my to God, banana. You're, well, it's, it's still in a pod. You wouldn't have been able to... It has to have been something we floated by in living with the land. Your nose is so stuffy now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like have... Does anybody have some Benadryl? Perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> this, all the way back here, look, this is the lightning lane. The lightning lane starts back here. It is a busy day today. We have made it to the World Showcase. We made it all the way back to Norway, or I guess all the way left to Norway. Oh, the lightning lane starts all the way back here. And just because it's a busy day doesn't mean it can't necessarily be a perfect day. As long as you have the right strategy using Genie Plus and individual lightning lanes, uh, using those tools, uh, really making sure you know what your priorities are for the day. Our priorities are honestly just uh, enjoying our time, relaxing, and making sure we park up. Uh, her big priority for the day was we did we did it right away, which way was seeing world celebration. world celebration. My big uh, my big uh, priority for the day was seeing Fantasmic and using my big hack. Everything in between that though uh, is writing as many things as we can, seeing as many things uh, off camera. Quincy just said, "Can we so see Indiana Jones?" Uh, Something spectacular at Hollywood Studios. Absolutely, why not? Yeah. Uh, we're we're making priorities as we go, but just because it's busy, as long as you have the right strategy, the right tools, it does not mean it can't be a perfect day. Frozen Ever After is a slow moving boat ride that takes place right after the movie Frozen ends. So Elsa has just unthawed Arendelle, Kristoff and Anna have found love, and Elsa's inviting everyone to her ice palace, and then she immediately sends you away. <laughs> She's just not very social. She's her just social not. battery, we all have different ones. Sure. Okay? Some of us here, some of us there. I also like that Elsa, whoever drew this, Elsa also included her dead parents. I don't think that's who that is. Who is it? I don't know, but they are. Sh are they sharing a beverage? They're sh out of the same, out of the same like two straws. Yeah. Split up briefly. 
We have decided to split up momentarily. If you are willing and able to split up, I recommend doing it if two people want two different things. We're gonna grab a quick snack. Quincy really wanted uh, something from Germany. She disappeared. I'm gonna grab something that I would like. Uh, I don't know what that is yet, but I know it's not what she's getting in Germany. I'm here in the Germany Pavilion heading to Sommerfest. This is a walk-up counter. Um, it actually does have mobile order, but the line's not too long, so I think I'll wait. They have pretzel bread pudding here, which is delicious, so I'm just getting myself a little bit of a snack. I don't have time for snacks, because the next American Adventure starts at 1.15. Hopefully Quincy makes it. Instead, I'm gonna go watch the Voices of Liberty, say hi to some friends. I got my pretzel bread pudding. It's warm, it's gooey. I'm gonna eat it. There they are. Hold on. Cheers. This one's not quite as warm as I've had them, but it's still super gooey. It's got like a crunchy pretzely top, the perfect amount of icing, and then a warm bread pudding gooey center. Mm. Alright, I have successfully dragged Sage to the American Adventure, even though he did try to get out of it. He won't tell you that, but I watched him try. And he <laughs> he floundered he floundered. He doesn't want to see the American Adventure and he has no taste. So we're now headed into the American Adventure. This is a uh, really cool show that is all animatronic based about American history. The show is hosted by Mark Twain and Benjamin Franklin, which might sound like a weird pairing, and that's because it is. It's the best show ever, you should see it. Well that's because we are the Mark Twain and Benjamin Franklin of all ears. <laughs> You're Mark Twain and I'm Benjamin. Franklin. Franklin? Is, or is it the other way around? I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll have know. to decide after the show. show. We need to watch, watch so that we know a, which one. one. We're so simpatico. <laughs> <laughs> Now this show is a very good show if you're a history buff, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not, I think it's worth seeing once because the animatronics are really cool. It is not the most exciting attraction. For most folks, it is not a must do. And I will say the seats are very comfortable. It is an excellent nap attraction, which I often find myself needing a nap in the middle of an Epcot day. And this 25 minute show, perfect for a little bit of a snooze. It's a really good show we just saw. America. It was so good. All the scenes in it that I definitely watched were really good. <laughs> your golden wings. I slept through the whole thing. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> yes. Hey, Sage, did you cool if I fall asleep? Yeah. Out. Do, do, out. Do what you want. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I got a good little nap in there. Um, we do have to get to Hollywood Studios though because it is about time for our lighting lanes, our lunch reservation, our exciting Hollywood Studios afternoon. Now typically we would take the Skyliner which we would head left uh, all the way through France and then hop on the Skyliner to make it to uh, Hollywood Studios pretty quickly. We, however, uh, did drive, and if you are ever driving your car or to your Disney World, car. your rental car, your car, whatever, if you use it to get to the parks, maybe you're not staying on property or you just want to skip the lines in the morning, you're going to want to move it with you. There is nothing worse than ending your day and having to go get your car at another park or another part of Disney World where you left it because you switched to Disney World transportation. So, Especially if you are uh, traveling back to a park that closed before the park you're currently it at. It can be really, really difficult to get around when that transportation starts to shut off. So uh, we do have to head back up to the front to grab Sage's car since we drove. Um, but that's not as exciting as like a pleasant Skyliner journey. We just got to the front of the park. We still have a long way to walk to the car. Yeah. And get this, neither of us know where, where we parked. Yeah, but just remember, it should be worth it. Because at the end of the night, we don't have to come back here. We suffer now so we don't have to suffer later. Yes. We made it to the car. We found it. I mean, barely. What? 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 We made it to Hollywood Studios. Where Sage are my sunglasses? Lost his sunglasses. Do you mean one of these? No, that's Shannon's. That's These have a weird like scratch in them that makes me look like an idiot. Also, we just got parked so, I mean like so far. Oh, this is fine. We're parked. Literally, uh, I mean, we are, we are, this is us. And that's cast parking. We're parked as like as far as as far as I can think of being parked from the entrance. Found my sunglasses. That's really good. I was sitting on them. <laughs> well, if you look in the distance and you squint, you can see Hollywood Studios. 
And it's also not great because we're in a rush to catch our lightning lane. So we can't even like meander. We have to like book it. Quincy's very excited about the parking lot I tramps. I don't want to walk that far. No, me either. This is going to be my final call for boarding. This is my final call for boarding. If you can get the sound of my voice, you stand up the feel free to come. We've made it in the park. We sure have. We've got a ton of plans for the afternoon, ton of lightning lanes for some fun. Um, Hollywood Studios is a, a really great park to spend like an afternoon evening and it's a really beautiful park at Christmas so the Christmas decorations in this park are definitely a little more Hollywood glam which we love. Can we get coffee again soon? We sure can. Nice. Well we're starting our Hollywood Studios afternoon at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This is the ride that you'll see right as you're entering the park directly in front of you. It's inside the Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, the former home of the great movie ride, but now it is a really cute adventure where you are in a trackless ride going along with Mickey and Minnie on a picnic, but things go a little haywire because Goofy's driving your train, and I don't know who thought that was a good idea. All right, we are cutting it a little close on this one because uh, our dining reservation starts very soon, so we're going to rush on in, hope the lightning lane gets us through as fast as possible, and then scurry on over to our dining reservation. I don't see a queue, I don't see, uh, there's not really queue for lightning lane. Yeah, so I think we'll be fine. Like it usually is, so so this should be good. Hey, 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 hey. All right, we just got off Mickey oh, and Minnie. Why are we stop? Why are we? We have to go. <laughs> oh right, I'm sorry. I was gonna talk about it. We have, we are rushing. Luckily, there is a 15 minute. Where are you going? Uh, Sutton. Which is that way? <laughs> Luckily, there is about a 15 minute uh, grace period on dining so reservations. I almost went the wrong way. Uh, you, you, I don't know where you were going. Um, well, there's about a 15 minute grace period on dining reservations, so um, we're scurrying on over to sci-fi but we will make it within our grace period we're just a little late for our actual reservation time if you are going to be later than that 15 minute grace period go ahead and call uh, guest services and they will be happy to help you sort of get who needs to know like if you're on the skyline or you know you're not going to make it give them a call um, they will do everything in their power to make sure you can still make that dining reservation I've checked uh, in. and adjust for it. you checked in yeah, wait, nice. do you have any dietary needs no I mean, I shouldn't have dairy, but I do. All right. Can, they, can you put that? Are she we... shouldn't have dairy, but she does. <laughs> so when you are close to a restaurant, you will get the option to check in mobily in most cases. You can do this in the My Disney Experience app, and typically a push notification will come up. If you don't see it, just go to your dining reservation. You'll see an option to check in. This speeds things along a little bit. When you get up there, you do not have to go to the host stand. Uh, just once you're checked in, you will get a push notification when your table is ready, and then you can head on in. You can also set it to send you a text, which I like to do because I love to swipe away a push notification. And that's what I did. It sent me a text, and we'll uh, be notified when it's time uh, for us to actually head inside. Now, the reservation that I, that I chose for today uh, was Sci-Fi Dine-In. One, because Quincy has never done... Uh, this is one of the t like 20-ish restaurants I've never done. Yes, and I wanted to be the first to uh, bring you here. Now, typically, the food is not... Amazing, but you go for the ambiance. The ambiance is one of my favorites in the Hollywood studios. Uh, now it was between this or Brown Derby, and I chose this because probably we're going to hit up the Brown Derby Lounge before we see Fantasmic. But the biggest reason we're here is because of the Fantasmic dining package. We got the text that our reservation that our table is ready, so uh, we're going to head into Sci-Fi Dine-In. Are you ready for your? I'm very excited. You know, I feel like you, I have like do more things for the first time in Disney World with you than like anybody else. Well, you see, that's because, you know, I'm here trying to, trying to get you to experience the world. I did Turtle Talk with Crush for you, with you for the first time. Yeah. I had fish and chips at the UK bar and set them outside for the first time. Stick with me, kid. Now I'm <laughs> so we made it to Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater. They say that we're going to travel back in time to a Hollywood drive-in theater. Now what's super cool is that on the outside, just like remnants of MGM Studios, uh, on the outside, it literally looks like a uh, like a movie set, but there is additional seating all the way in the back, kind of like in there by like the snack stand. And you can see the kitchen all the way in the back. The ambiance is like definitely like it's just so cool. And we're seated in cars. I mean, how do you top that? Okay, I had to leave uh, just for a moment so that way I could actually communicate. 
to you guys uh, in, a, in a normal speaking volume because inside it is dark. It, it feels like an actual movie theater, drive-in movie theater uh, with convertibles because everybody is literally uh, intently watching the movie, uh, the, 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 the short clips of the movie. They're eating, they're enjoying the ambiance. It's exactly how you would, you would picture a 50s drive-in movie. But let's talk about the big hack, my number one priority for the day, which was Fantasmic. But how does, how does this... How does this all make sense? How is this Fantasmic? Well, actually, uh, we got the dining package for Fantasmic. Now, there are a couple different restaurants that go along with the Fantasmic dining package. There's Mama Melrose, uh, 50s uh, Primetime Cafe, uh, Hollywood and Vine, and the Brown Derby. For a fixed price, you can actually dine at one of these locations. And then at the end of your meal, you'll, you'll get a voucher, uh, like a little almost like a little slip of paper that says you have priority seating for Fantasmic. All you're gonna do is you're gonna show up to the uh, entrance gates for Fantasmic, show them the slip of paper and they'll put you in a separate line and you will get VIP seating, priority seating to see Fantasmic, which, which means you don't have to wait in the crazy long lines uh, to get a good seat. And today it's gonna be a crazy long line to get a seat. So this was super duper important for me. Each of you gets an appetizer and an entree and a drink, or you can substitute a dessert for the appetizer. Uh, for the purpose of today, since uh, Quincy and I were eating here together, Quincy got an appetizer, uh, I, we both got entrees, and then I got a dessert, so that way you kind of got the full meal happening. Now each time I'm really hoping Sci-Fi is going to impress me uh, from, you know, just leveling up with their food in some capacity. Uh, I'm really hoping that's the case today, but typically isn't. Uh, but I, I love the fact that I get to bring Quincy here for the first time. Feels very special, so let's go. <laughs> Our pickles are in here. <laughs> Trying the fried pickles. We got the fried pickles. That was the appetizer that she started with, um, that she went with, because I got the, the dessert. With the Fantasmic dining package, you get an appetizer, entree, and drink non-alcoholic. I just uh, spilled all this. Oh. You're good. That's why I went up there, so I can wow. talk at a normal level. Oh. I just thought you were gone. No. Thoughtful. No, but that, that is an important point, uh, that the drink is non-alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Alcoholic costs extra. Hold on, what do you... I'm, which one did you get? I got the ranch. Well, I'm getting the horseradish then. Which does not taste like horseradish. We did taste it. <laughs> the batter is like really crunchy for a fried pickle batter. You know what I mean? I prefer it though. I'm not a huge pickle person. I feel like the crunch is a nice, uh, you know difference between the like kind of like sogginess juiciness of the pickle so it worked well for me it works for me too it's just not what i was expecting yeah it's definitely a different batter that looks like a chicken nugget i was gonna say it, it's got like a chicken it nugget like batter a to it yeah they're pretty tasty i think i would get these again i especially like the horseradish the horseradish sauce is it's good really good and it's not it doesn't taste like horseradish it tastes like a sriracha Wait, i thought it was paprika he thought it was sriracha and it's got like a some heat to it, a bite, but not in the horseradish nose way. It's in yeah. a regular spice way. I have had the nachos here before, and mm -hmm. I would say, appetizer-wise, pickles are definitely better than the nachos. Really? And you're not even a pickle person. I know, which is wild. That's interesting. Yeah. Honestly? Fries kind of slap. The fries kind of slap. Mm -hmm. The fries slap. They're really, they're seasoned really well. A lot of potato meat. A lot of potato meat. And it's, but the outside is still crispy. Yeah but it's seasoned really well. Mm -hmm. I think they're very buttery, yeah. It's very it's buttery. Really oh my gosh. So I actually got the Bon Mi burger, which is grilled house-made pork patty tossed with roasted pork belly, pickled vegetables, cucumber, herbs, and sriracha aioli. Quinta got the chicken salad sandwich, which is house-made creamy blend of chicken, Granny Smith apples, celery, mayonnaise, and spices with applewood smoked bacon, lettuce, vine-ripened marinated tomatoes, and cilantro avocado aioli served in a fresh baked multi-grain croissant. I'm really full. <laughs> okay. You don't have to eat the whole thing if you don't want to. I ate all the pickles. <laughs> and now I'm full. This comes highly recommended from uh, our team uh, on allthese.net. Also, our friends at uh, Disney Food Blog. Can I have a napkin? Have you ever seen the horror of Party Beach? <laughs> <laughs> 
it feels like it's missing something. I just had to reread the description, and all in all, the pork belly is good. I mean, it's it's seasoned well. It you know it's juicy, but it's just it just feels like that's all it like. It's missing the sriracha aioli. Like it's, there's not enough. There's not enough. Like there's not enough condiments. It just feels like slaw and meat and bread. Like there's no there's no additional flavors other than the bread and the meat, which you know it feels like it should be there, there should be a little bit of wetness involved. Does that make sense? Yeah. And sriracha is typically a spicier condiment. And it's just not spicy at all. It just tastes like mayonnaise. It just tastes like mayonnaise. Yeah. I think I was just I was just expecting more from it. Mine is really interesting. I actually really like it. Um, the main flavors are like the first big burst of flavor you get is that marinated tomato. It's like a super savory, but that like very juicy, acidic like explosion of tomato flavor. Mm -hmm. And then the chicken salad has a lot of acidity from the Granny Smith apples in it, which I love. My favorite thing in chicken salad is grapes, which this doesn't have, but Granny Smith apples is a nice other option. What was weird to me is that the bread, the the croissant is fresh baked. It's baked here apparently, or fresh baked it says. It has like a sweetness to it on the back end, almost like like you just like swallowed a cookie. (laughs) But I'm eating a chicken salad sandwich. So it's definitely, like, I like this. I, I think I would get it again. It's just, I think mostly what you're here for is the ambiance. And I've heard Correct. that time and time again. And I definitely agree with it. Um, and I'm not mad at this sandwich, but I would not seek it out. We got our dessert to go because we're full. I said I wasn't going to have any of it. I've already <laughs> had a lot of it. <laughs> but if we go right <laughs> Somebody is fine. <laughs> but if we go right now, right now, we can make the Indiana Jones show. A mother stomach's that all. I want to make the Indiana Jones show. Let's go. We made it. Uh, and weirdly, for as busy as it is today, no one is here seeing. It's, it's not. A, it's not a. No one is here seeing the Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular. You can't eat the cherry. No, I, I never eat the cherry. You wanna sit there? You wanna sit there? Yeah. After you. Here's a fun hack that I did not know about. Um, if you get your milkshake to go, your dessert to go uh, at uh, Sci-Fi Dine-In, it's actually a bigger portion because they put it in, in a larger cup, uh, and then you get to carry it around. Um, <laughs> and it's really good. <laughs> it's surprisingly really it's like good. A shockingly good milkshake. Yeah, it's yeah. cold out too, and I'm like, it's yeah, like, yeah milkshake. milkshake. I'm actually getting like intense chest freeze right now. You know when you like <laughs> eat too much ice cream and it's like cold inside your body. To people who are lactose intolerant yes. eating a shake, drinking a milkshake. We have many more hours in the theme park and we're both lactose intolerant. <laughs> Goodbye rides. Hello bathroom. We can't wait to hang out in every Disney World's bathroom. <laughs> Indiana Jones, one of our favorite shows. Got to see one of my all-time favorite, Marion's, Chelsea. Uh, great job. Uh, so good. The, ca- the entire cast was so good. Great timing. Uh, great co- their, their, their delivery on jokes. Were, with yeah. the, the crowd were loving it. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, that, I love that show every single time I see it, constantly, forever and ever. I, like, know it by heart. I can recite it along with the show. Yeah. I love it every time. Yeah, so good. Okay, here we are being sidetracked again. Yeah, Sage just will not let us stick to a plan today. <laughs> well, it should, Quincy said, wait, uh, I have to show you my favorite place in all of Hollywood Studios. And uh, we're walking towards Lightning McQueen Racing we're Academy. Not going to Lightning McQueen Racing Academy. But she says we're not going to the show. What, what's your favorite place in all of Hollywood Studios? It's the restrooms next to Lightning McQueen <laughs> Racing Academy. Oh my God. And I know. So we both haven't gone to the bathroom since we said we needed to when we were leaving at 5 Yes, we both need to go to the bathroom. All right, uh, well, you know what? Let's bathroom break for everybody. Pause the video. Go. Go 
come back. Do your thing and then come yeah. back. All right, sure, yeah. The restrooms back here are pretty solid. They're very private, not a lot of people in there. Uh, honestly, not a lot of like stalls or uh, urinals, you know. There's not a lot of them, but it's okay because uh, I was the only one in there. And there's plenty of people out here, but for some reason no one's, no one's using the restroom near uh, Lightning Queen's Racing Academy, so that's a fun hack. <laughs> all right, uh, now that we've done all the things we need to do, we're gonna head into uh, our lightning lane. G-Force Records. G-Force Records lightning, lightning lane. Rock and Roller Coaster is a high-speed coaster attraction where you are headed to Aerosmith's concert in a super stretch limo and you're zooming through the streets, uh, but you barely make it in time. But don't worry, it's okay because you've got some backstage passes. It's currently the only roller coaster in Walt Disney World that goes upside down, so it's definitely uh, a very much sought after attraction. This uh, queue gets a lot of hate because they're like, what, what is the theming here? Remember, you are entering a recording studio. It's G-Force Records. Yeah. <laughs> We're going in. It's perfect. Oh, luckily. We're studio C. Oh, wait a minute. And the pre-show is down. The lava lamps are on. <laughs> Which means rock did happen in here. <laughs> Ah, we made it. <laughs> we're, we were in mid-conversation before this we went were, off. I wasn't paying attention and it really did shock me. <laughs> All right, quick, we don't, we, we've got to get to Millennium Falcon. Oh, we made it, one minute. Is that five minutes? What is happening? Oh, why did we run here? For, we didn't run. Why did we quickly walk here? One why minute to Disney spare. Why did we Disney run here? Watch Lightning Lane be longer because this is the... This is gonna be wild. Look, sure. like nobody, lightning lane. That's so it, it's gotta be true. I mean, that's like, look at it. We did indeed make it to Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, which is a motion simulator attraction where you hop into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon from the Star Wars franchise, and you physically, you do fly. It does fly. It's more of a video game than a motion simulator. I always say Mission Space walked so Smuggler's Run could fly. Now, just like Mission Space, uh, on this attraction, you are assigned a role, and what you do actually matters. They're the engineers who are in charge of fixing the ship if anything goes wrong. Then there are the gunners who are in charge of, you know, shooting things, making sure we're safe. And then there are the pilots. One pilot controls going up and down, the other pilot controls going left and right. It is truly a team effort. However, I would really love to be the pilot, because last time I was on here, uh, two five-year-olds were, <laughs> were our pilots. Uh, and not saying that five-year-olds can't drive, but I'm also saying five-year-olds can't, can't not drive. <laughs> so typically there's a really cool Hondo Anaka animatronic. Hondo Anaka is a, uh, a traitor, scavenger, if you will. Someone who's not really super reliable in the Star Wars franchise, but uh, this is currently in B mode. That just means Hondo Anaka, something seems to be off with him right now. So uh, we're get, we'll get a different pre-show. We're entering the Millennium Falcon. This is huge, and we're the pilot. Oh, we're going. I always think this is probably one of the coolest cues just because it really does look like you're inside the Millennium Falcon. Good luck to you all. You might need it. Today's flight takes you to the planet Corellia. You will fire on the left. Move your skip to fly right and left. I was just about to say. Yeah! Minus what you owe me for damaging the Falcon is... Hey, not bad. Wow. You know what's funny? What? I'm not used to riding Millennium, uh, Millennium Falcon Toyota's run at night. Yeah, and so it was weird that it was nighttime. Yeah, so when you come back to Batuu uh, on the attraction, it's nighttime and it's always been daytime for me. Yeah, but it's nighttime right now. It's nighttime. We were flying back to Batuu. So yeah, that's be very immersive. It 
was a 25 minute walk up wait and they called us after two minutes. Now one thing to know is that the walk up wait list on the app said it was full. It said it was completely full. So I checked the app while Sage asked and with a, with a physical question they had room. Yeah. So if you check that wait list in the app and you're like, oh no, go ask in person, there might be space. So I got the Jedi Mind Trick. That's Kettle One Botanical Grapefruit and Rose Vodka, Velvet Falerno Blue Curacao, White Grape Juice, Lime Juice, and Grapefruit Bitters. And Quincy's trying the Jet Juice, which is Maker's Mark Kentucky Straight Bourbon, Ancho Reyes Chili Liqueur, Pomegranate Liqueur, White Grape Juice, and Lemon Juice. There's a lot of white grape juice in these drinks. Big on white grape in the, in the stars. Clearly. <laughs> Uh, for, for the order. Something's going on. Yeah, for the order. Yes, yes, absolutely, Trooper. Tabuite means savor the moment. Tabuite. Tabuite. Now, you are not savoring that. Tabuite. Tabuite. Savor the moment. Savor the moment. Say it. Thank you. I think this is an awesome drink. It's not overly bourbon forward, which I just started drinking bourbon again. It definitely has a really pleasant burn to it. Like, usually I wouldn't call an alcoholic burn pleasant, but it's like a tart, fruity burn as it goes down your throat, which I get why it's called jet fuel. It's got a good amount of sweetness to it, and it really is a lot like a little bit of a souped up, old fashioned, just in vibes. It's mostly just sweet bourbon, but the heat from the chili, the, it, it's chili liqueur, right? Yes. Yeah, the heat from the chili liqueur really makes a difference. That is a killer drink. Yeah, the reason that typically with drinking an old fashioned or Manhattan or bourbon or whiskey in general, that, you, that it's important to feel a little bit of a burn, just because it's important to know that you are drinking some sort of alcohol. You know, if it's too smooth, you drink it like juice and then you're done so. So that's why I like to have just a little bit of burn. Just go, you know what? This is alcohol. It's pretty good. It's good stuff. One of my favorite things about Ogus Cantina is definitely just the music because you can actually hear songs uh, from the former, oh, that hurts my heart, the former uh, Galactic Star Cruiser, like songs from Gaia and of course the uh, famous, you know, from Star Wars, the Cantina Band a song. Now our personal recommendation is that if you're going to Ogus Cantina, go for the drinks, skip the food. Do not touch the food. Don't touch the food. Listen to me, look me in the eyes. Me in the eyes. Don't touch the food. Do not touch the food. Oh, there was a Jedi mind trick. Uh, it, it's. <laughs> I don't want to sit here and, and say the food is that terrible. I thought she was gonna chime in there. Nope, she Sorry, wasn't. Wait, is that blue? Okay. Has that blue French horn always been there? That's from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, is that a How I Met Your Mother reference? I honestly don't know. Has it always been there? And if no, is it a How I Met Your Mother reference? I have no idea. Let us know. I have no clue. Yeah, does anyone know if that blue French horn has always been there? Now, <laughs> now I'm not here to say that the, that the food at Ogus Cantina is just the worst thing you've ever had. However, it is supposed to be galactic food, so it's a lot of... I thought you were going to say, however, it is galactically bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is galactic food, which means it's going to be uh, flavors that you're not used to in different textures. But here's the thing. Okay. Sometimes galactic food is a ronto wrap. Sometimes galactic food is a, is a scotch egg fried in funnel cake batter that was on the Star Cruiser and I mourn it every day. And sometimes galactic food is a, the worst charcuterie board you've ever seen in your life and jello with pop rocks on top. It's not pop rocks. Right. It's like Rocks. Oga's Cantina has small oh bites. God. That's not, that's, that's just not ideal for the everyday goer. The thing that I totally forgot about was that if you're in a small party and you're on the standby list, actually not even if you're on the standby list, if you're on a small party, you could be seated with other families. Yeah, we were seated with another family. And I totally forgot you that was a thing. Them. We literally, they just sat us down with the family. Uh, I've always been seated at the bar. 
Really? You're lucky. Yeah, all, almost always. I'm usually seated with some family. And I'm like, hey, I'm your cousin now. <laughs> it's so, like going to 50s prime time when you get seated at Ogre's Cantina with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Quincy. Cousin Quincy. Uh, so that's definitely a thing. So be aware you might be seated with other people. We are headed into the Hollywood Tower Hotel. Meet <laughs> and that was a seagull. Currently it's a 20 minute wait, which is actually a really, really short wait for uh, Tower of Terror. Here's my theory is that Rise of the Resistance has actually been down all day. That's true. All day. And it's up at 180 now, but it's been up for like... Maybe two an hour, yeah, three two hours? two hours, yeah. Um, so I think now because uh, Rise of the Resistance is up. I, everybody ran to that attraction, which means it quickly lowered the weights to many of uh, the other attractions. Hollywood, 1939. This is not good. Typically I would say left, but this, I just I don't know. Oh, left, 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 always left. It's got to be a little bit different because it's going to be more, we feel like it's longer. There's a moment uh, where Quincy was just talking about uh, where at the very end you see the spiral uh, kind of like video graphic and then it shoots you up again. There are some things that just like we know for a fact we, didn't happen before. We feel like they have to have done, like they have to spice that baby up. Because it's... Cause she's spicy. She's spicy lately. Spicy. It's slowly becoming like... One of my fa you know, favorite things that I do just because I don't know, don't what, know to what to expect. expect. I wrote it so many times before the pandemic that I knew exactly what was happening. All right, we've got one more thing to do before we get into our priority seating for uh, Fantasmic. This was a special request by me. Uh, I, one of his perfect day. One of my perfect day things. It's something that we do kind of quite frequently on perfect days, but uh, Stop by. Just, well, I'll show you. Stop by. We'll show you. So I might have lied just a little bit. Um, I did. Only because I did promise uh, a little bit of like a shopping scenario in case we want. Oh, yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. So we're going to go shopping for a bit. Uh, there's some things that I have to buy for my own personal situations. His wife texted him that she wants a serious spirit jersey. Which, oh, by the way. And she deserves it. On our perfect day, I just want to shout out everyone in the comments. Yes, that was so sweet that, that was... you guys were asking if we got her the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, we but forgot. We forgot the popcorn. <laughs> we were in the car and Sage goes, no! <laughs> but I will not forget the spirit jersey. Let's go. No, we're getting it out. So surprised to no one, I have um, kind of been in, like in a spirit jersey era lately just because... Um, we're in the park so often, and we're, we're, when we're not doing something for all your style, it's just comfortable. So I think I'm gonna look at, try and get some fun spirit jerseys. However, you know what I do love? You know what? I feel like this, this movie, Elemental, is so underrated. Fierce and fiery. That's you. Quincy, what if we got matching, like, hats? That could be really good, actually. <laughs> Fabric spirit jersey uses, but this I feel very good about. You had the you hit the fabric, sir. Yeah, this fabric. What's the fabric? I don't like it. 
You mean the one that I wear? Yeah, it makes me feel sweaty. Oh. I feel this. That would that that's gonna make you feel real sweaty. That's like actual. Yeah, but I would wear it at home. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that like have piqued our interest. Yeah. But not enough to spend. Not enough to spend. Seventy, price. eighty dollars for. This is also probably the best time to shop. Is right towards the end of your day, but not at the very end. That way, you're not stuck carrying around something for a really long time. But you're also not in the massive crowds that will be doing their shopping at the very end of the day. Um, a lot of folks wait till the very end on their way out to shop. The stores will be so crowded; it's hard to decide what you really want. So. This is a good a good time to do shopping. It's kind of that like winding down period. That is. Found it. Okay. She wants the black one. Before anybody says anything, again, thank you for your support. Shannon, thanks you for your support. Uh, they, uh, Shannon, her, her spirit jerseys, she likes to wear them in an over, uh, like, like in an overly large size. And they're out. And they're out. They're out. They're out of them. It's okay. We, we made a, we made, I, I made our promise we're going to go to Disney Springs because they'll definitely have, have them out, World of Disney. Oh, or, so don't worry. <laughs> So don't worry. Forget this time. Wait, I did not forget. <laughs> but I appreciate you. All right, we have arrived. As you can see, Fantastic is not super slammed tonight. It is on the cold side, um, but this can definitely get very, very, very busy. So uh, it's definitely something to arrive early. And these best seats down here in the front center are always going to be reserved for the dining package. So a couple things. First things first, if you do have outside food, for example, we got uh, drinks from the Tuna Lounge. You are allowed to bring that in uh, the stadium, but uh, there's also a full snack stand at the back of the stadium. My big recommendation would be is for someone to hold the seat and then someone else uh, in your party go grab the snacks. So that way you can save your seats once you are seated. Now, because we had such a late lunch, kind of nearly dinner, we're just grabbing a snack. We've acquired corn dog nuggets. Yeah, they're, they're, it's like a dinosaur. It's they like look, a dinosaur it's hatching. Corn dog, it's literally. It's a hatching. dinosaur egg hatching. I don't care. I love corn dog nuggets and we're at Fantasmic. Yeah, I, can, can I tell you that I tried it? You ate one of my corn dog nuggets? I did. Yeah, full disclosure, the corn dog nuggets here at the Fantasmic stand, they're definitely not Casey's Corners uh, corn dog nuggets. It tastes like a corn dog nugget from a dinosaur. Tastes like, yes, it's it's hard. It's like it's been up there for a long time. It, it's like the dinosaur went extinct, but its eggs are still here. Its corn dog eggs are still existing. Look, there's a dinosaur clearly trying to get out at this time. Are you about to eat that one too? Like 
sitting next to someone who is just equally as excited about the experience and just like squeezing my arm throughout the entire thing <laughs> made me wicked emotional. So like, thank you for that. I'm really crying. <laughs> okay. I just want to see the show of my friends. Well, let's get out of here before we cry. I'm crying already. <laughs> All right, Sage. That was a pretty perfect day, huh? That was. It was. If you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And now go watch us have a perfect day in Animal Kingdom and Epcot. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye. What a weird outro. <laughs>